Hey guys, how's it going? So, today I'm going to do something <clears throat> that I've never done before since I've started doing these reviews. And what is that you may ask? Well, I'm going to do four reviews in one day. That's right. Four reviews <clears throat> in one day. Never had that happen before, huh? So, what are these four things I'm going to be reviewing today? Well, today I'm going to look at the Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition. Now, I'm going to be reviewing a, a, a Star Wars Episodes 4, 5, and 6, as well as the bonus material disc. So, let's start off with the one that started all, Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, which came out in 1977. <sighs> what a movie this was, guys. What a movie this is. It was what I should have said, but oh well. So, anywho, um, <clears throat> this movie basically is the very first movie in the Star Wars franchise. Um, there's no doubt about that. It's it's by far one of the one of the best of the of the original trilogy. Although a lot of people say that Empire Strikes Back was the best one, but you know the first is always the best one. There's no doubt about that in anyone's mind. I mean. Like the like everyone says like the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie was the best and I would have to agree. Same thing with other franchises. Like the first movie is always the best one and it's always the one that people uh, compare it to when they do the sequels. And of course sometimes a sequel is so good that the movie that comes after that one is is compared to that as far as how good it is. So let's start off with episode four, shall we? So basically, the overall plot of the movie focuses around uh, the Rebel Alliance, which is trying to defeat the evil Galactic Empire, and it's and it's led by Princess Leia, played by Carrie Fisher, who is 55 now. Unbelievable. I know, right? <laughs> so, anywho, um, but yeah, and I know we also get introduced to the two central droid characters, R2-D2, and C-3PO. And what's interesting is that C-3PO is actually a guy in his suit. And uh, the man in the suit was uh, Anthony Daniels, who would reprise the role in the two sequels, as well as in the prequel trilogy. And for R2-D2, um, for the two-legged position, um, they actually put a, a midget inside, and that person's name was Kenny Baker, who also also uh, did also did did the same thing for the prequel trilogy and of course the two sequels from episode four from episode four and also um, he played one of the Ewoks in episode six so that's very interesting so anywho um, in the beginning of the movie a rebel cruiser is being attacked by a star destroyer and it's a very very unique uh, it's very very interesting first part of the film and so after that, um, Princess Leia gets captured by the evil, menacing Darth Vader, who in the suit was played by British bodybuilder David Prowse, but the voice was done by James Earl Jones. Oh yeah. And of course, before all that, Princess Leia records a message and then puts something into R2-D2. So then R2-D2 and C-3PO, they escape via an escape pod and they make their way into Tatooine but unfortunately they bicker about which way to go and so then they go off in separate ways of course R2 then gets ambushed by Jawas and eventually C-3PO has that done to him as well but it's never shown on screen so there you go and then eventually they make their way to where uh, to where Luke Skywalker played by the always awesome Mark Hamill is as well as uh, his aunt and uncle and of course they buy R2-D2 and C-3PO and while Luke is cleaning R2 he comes across the holographic message done by Princess Leia and apparently uh, <clears throat> there's and apparently R2 is looking for his former master Obi-Wan Ben Kenobi who in this movie and in the sequels is played by the late Sir Alec Guinness of course, I don't know if I liked his performance more or Ewan McGregor's performance more. I don't know. Just bear with me, people. So, anywho, R2 then escapes. Then he finds oh, and he finds Obi Wan, and then uh, they. 
And then they come, and then of course they, uh, oh, hold on a sec. Sorry about that, guys. And then they listen to the completed message, which tells that R2 has the plans for a new weapon by the Empire that hopefully the Rebel Alliance can use to determine a weakness. And so eventually they go to Mos Eisley, and of course there they meet Han Solo, played by the always awesome Harrison Ford, and Chewbacca, played by Peter Mayhew, who of course, as all the other mains, reprise the role in the sequels, and then in episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. So anywho, they get on, so eventually they get on the ship, the Millennium Falcon, and then they make their escape, and of course... They go to hyperspeed, and afterwards, it turns out that the planet Alderaan has been destroyed. And of course, it's when they get introduced to the Death Star, which is the new weapon that the Empire has been working on and is fully operational. Da da da. So you know they get pulled in by a tractor beam, and uh, and of course they have to find Princess Leia, which they ultimately do. And while meanwhile Obi Wan is going to, meanwhile Obi Wan. He disables the tractor beam so that the ship can leave, but unfortunately he meets up with Darth Vader and they have this whole lightsaber duel and stuff like that and ends really tragically with Obi-Wan dying. So then everyone else gets on board and then they make their way to the rebel base which is on Yavin 4. And they determine that there is a weakness to the Death Star and so they plan to use it uh, to make their attack on the Death Star. And of course, the of course we get all these really cool space battles, like in the trenches and stuff like that. It's really, really cool when you see it on screen. It's absolutely amazing. And so, of course, we lose they lose a whole they lose some pilots and stuff like that. And ultimately, Luke he destroys the Death Star, and everyone goes home happy, and it's all good enough, and it's all good and yada yada yada. So, this movie is really, really good. Like I said, it's probably the best of the original trilogy. Um, you know, there weren't that many changes that they made. I mean, yeah, they made the effects look better. And, of course, they uh, of course they cleaned up the, the discoloration in the film and so on and so forth. And it looks really good here. But now, the original trilogy, or actually, I mean, all the movies now was released have been released on Blu-ray, so, excuse me, and of course, they made even more changes and modifications, so I'm like, and you really have to wonder why, I mean, seriously, you guys, the special edition, you cannot go wrong with it, it's perfectly fine, seriously, George Lucas, we don't need any more changes, seriously, I totally agree with the confused Matthew on this, we don't need any more changes to these movies. The special edition is fine. We don't need any more of these added scenes or added lines of dialogue here and there and everywhere. We don't need it. It's perfectly fine. The special edition of these movies is perfect. We don't need any more alterations. How hard is that for you to understand? <sighs> Sorry, I just had to go on a little rant there, just like if you Matthew did, so bear with me, folks. <laughs> but anywho, um, but still, this movie, awesome. It's great. It's fantastic. I love it. It's just awesome. So after I'm uh, done uploading this little bugger to YouTube, I'll be I'll then be reviewing Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi, and of course the bonus disc, which basically has a whole lot of bonus material on it. So there you go. So, yeah, that's probably it for now. Well, until I get around to reviewing the Price Strikes Back, of course. So, there you have it. So, yeah, I, like I said, after I'm done uploading this little booger to YouTube, I'll then, of course, be reviewing Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi. So, there you have it. Live long and prosper. Peace out. Talk to you guys pretty soon. Bye.